Our next Pulling Hall of Fame inductee asked himself early in his pulling career, what can you do with something old to still keep up with something new? And the remainder of his pulling career was spent answering that question by imagining, designing, building, and competing with Allison Aircraft Engines for over two decades. Mike Holden and his Dusty Diamond pulling team, which consisted at various points of single, twin, triple, and quad engine machines, more importantly, consisted of family, neighbors, and friends. A lot of the work was done between 9 or 10 o'clock at night and 3 and 4 in the morning, he explained, because that's when the folks could come to the shop to help. Mike's first venture into pulling followed a period spent racing late models in the 1960s. His name began appearing in the 1975 in Puller Magazine, but two problems surfaced. First, he was competing in an era in which names like Banner, Heilman, Arfons, and Harness were emerging as superstars, and he knew his equipment wasn't going to cut it. But secondly, running automotive engines didn't satisfy his creative side. I like to build, reflects Mike, who admits that everything on which he was about to embark meant doing things the hard way. Fellow puller Ron Barchi had successfully campaigned two tractors, the judge and the jury, with exotic power plants from a World War II fighter plane, the P-38 Lightning, each one of which sported two V-12 1,710 cubic inch 1,000 horsepower Allison engines. Replaced by jets, the now planeless Allisons could be found by the thousands. In July of 1978, the puller reported on two new aircraft power modified from southeastern Ohio under the precedent headline, Revolutionizing Allisons. Quoting Neil Wagner of Lowell and Mike Holden of Marietta, may have set the tone and direction for Allison powered machine for future years. Mike's was a single engine entry with twin turbochargers. Neil stair stepped twin supercharged engines. Both were among the first tractors to employ planetaries, as well as Mike's signature contribution to the pulling industry outside of his work with Allison's, the Holden three-speed transmission. To date, Mike has built over 300 of them for applications in all types of pulling vehicles. Mike opted for the turbo solution for both safety and performance reasons. Allison's centrifugal superchargers were known to explode when the fuel mixture was lean. I feel I have a safer, and once the bugs are worked out, a more reliable source of high horsepower and torque. Top five finishes followed at Port Recovery in Bowling Green, Ohio, and at the Indiana and Ohio State Fair in 1979, with the year's highlight being a win nine mod at the Purdue Boilermaker Pool. Now, the work schedule of an agricultural truck and diesel instructor at Washington County Career Center, to which Mike adhered to for 31 and a half years, was conducive to summertime pulling. But changes were coming. As Mike bought out Wagner at Christmas time in 1979 and went pulling in Florida that winter with both tractors, and Mike says greatly with the understanding of his superintendent. Wins with a twin, now named Prospector, came in Tampa Bay Stadium in the seven mod at Daytona International Raceway in the 12 Unlimited and in Ocala in the 9 Mod. That summer, Mike reconstructed the machine with turbochargers and a lighter frame to go pulling in classes starting at 5,000 pounds. A win at, in the 9 at Fort Recovery was the bright spot of 1981, but a blurb in the September issue foretold Dusty Diamond's direction. There's been a strong rumor about a triple Allison. Well, it took a few years to come to fruition. But in its fourth ever hook at Bowling Green, 1985, the triple took second in the Unlimited. Said Hall of Famer Ralph Banner at the time, he's a true innovator. That new tractor will be a pain in our neck, but I'm glad to see it. It's just what the class needs, new blood. A year later, Mike asked around the Thanksgiving table who would be up for helping him turn out his latest concept, the world's first four-engine modified into reality in time for the Indy Super Bowl in mid-January. After mocking up the latest product of his imagination with 3x12 pine boards on the shop floor, Holden and his neighbors did just that. Lots of help then and throughout his pulling days came from wife Janet. The two began dating when Mike was racing and we were married in 1979. 
Her support of Mike's pulling efforts came in the form of attending pulls between shifts, the nearby DuPont plant, and cooking for the shop workers, paid and volunteered, late into the night. Mike reflected on their Sunday family days, first church, then chores at the house and farm, and finally, time spent with Janet and sons Chuck and Joe in the shop, eating and fellowshipping while working on Mike's next idea. Speaking of which, back to that four-engine tractor. It competed in the 12 Unlimited in Indianapolis in 1987 and earned fifth place against literally pulling's heaviest hitters. As Mike explained, running four decade-old technology against modern automotive engines and their made-to-order horsepower was like taking a Model T and going to the Indy 500. You don't have to win to make it a success. Mike stoked a friendly rivalry with the automotive engine pullers. I like to think it's the Allison guys against the big aluminum block guys, he once told the magazine. That adds a little more to the sport. Mike struck a partnership with Ron Barchi in 1990. The two engineered and piloted the silver and orange tractors to 7th and 9th in the Grand National Modified standing that year. Mike still marvels at all the trips Ron made back and forth across Ohio to help in the shop and on the farm and, in one instance, just to hear one engine fire. That was the one Mike had equipped with a Mallory Magneto in the process solving the greatest issue Allison competitors had faced, unreliable ignition. Mike soon gave up driving entirely. I always enjoyed watching the stuff I built compete, Mike recalled. I didn't enjoy the driving. I couldn't see my stuff run. You can't see anything from the seat. Mike Holden is a man of dedication. From his service to the NTPA as chairman of the Modified Divisional Committee, to his all-in approach in refining the Allisons, from improving their lubrication system to machining his own parts using Cummins cylinder liners. He bought engine blocks individually and by the semi-load until it was time to start selling instead. He stopped competing in 1994 and sold the last of his stock in 2004. Mike says the best thing about pulling was all the good people we meet. His own philosophy could best be summed up in an answer to the puller's question in the month of September 1987. If you could be another puller, who would it be? Said Mike, I enjoy doing things on my own, and I don't try to follow a path. I think everyone can see that. I just assume be me. Please welcome to the stage Mr. Mike Holden, member of the 2016 class, Pulling Hall of Fame.